Hello friends, if you are new to the channel, I am Prasad Domala and I am a senior cloud architect and DevOps engineer. And on this channel, I will be talking about uh, all things related to cloud computing, focusing mainly on uh, AWS. Today, I will talk about uh, building scalable uh, GraphQL APIs on AWS using AWS AppSync and CDK. So let's dive in. AWS AppSync service is a managed serverless GraphQL service that simplifies uh, application development by letting us uh, create a flexible GraphQL based uh, API. AppSync supports a range of uh, data sources like DynamoDB, Aurora, OpenSearch, HTTP APIs, and Lambda. Like any other AWS service, we can deploy AppSync using different tools available like Amplify CLI, CloudFormation, CDK, etc. And in today's demo, we'll be using AWS CDK to build our uh, AppSync GraphQL API. AppSync supports uh, built in real time data update capabilities, which means it can push real time updates over uh, web sockets to millions of uh, clients. It also supports offline capabilities and it leverages uh, local data stores on mobile or uh, web applications to access data when the devices go offline and does a data sync when they are um, back online. Let's now have a look at the demo infrastructure we'll be uh, building today. So we'll build a simple API which does uh, create, read, update and delete operations on some mock user data which is stored in our uh, DynamoDB table. And we'll be using direct Lambda resolvers which uh, performs these operations on our uh, DynamoDB table. We shall map our uh, GraphQL API requests to these uh, Lambda resolvers. AppSync resolvers basically provide business logic by linking the GraphQL schema with our uh, data sources, which in our case is uh, DynamoDB. I have a template uh, Git repo with all the config and uh, settings required uh, to build Lambda functions using AWS CDK and TypeScript. So I used that template and created a new uh, repo called AppSync GraphQL um, API CDK. You can use this template if you need a starting point uh, for developing uh, Lambda functions using CDK. I'll leave the link in the description. We shall use this uh, starter repo to add our um, AppSync uh, related resources and Lambda function code instead of building a CDK project from scratch. So I have another video where I explained how to build uh, Lambda functions using uh, CDK from scratch. So I would uh, strongly recommend to watch that video if you want to know how to build Lambda functions from scratch using AWS CDK. I'll leave the link in the description. I have my uh, repo opened here in uh, VS Code and under Lambda handlers, I have a sample Lambda function. I'm renaming it as uh, getusers.ts. And I'm also adding three more files, addUser.ts, deleteUser.ts, and uh, updateUser.ts. As of now, these are just uh, empty handlers. We'll add more code to these um, handlers uh, later in this video. Before writing our Lambda code, let's add type definition for our uh, user object. So within my uh, types file, I'm adding a new type definition called uh, user. So this user object will have some basic attributes like first name, last name, email, gender, job title, and country. Also have an item type attribute, which I'll be using as an index attribute uh, within my DynamoDB table. While we are here, let's add some more uh, type definitions that we shall be uh, using in our uh, Lambda resolvers. First, I'll add uh, get user params. Within this type, I have uh, next token and email, and both these parameters are optional. So next token can be used to get data in batches and email can be used to uh, fetch a single user from uh, DynamoDB based on email address. If you don't pass in uh, email, all users will be returned. I wrapped these arguments within an attribute called uh, get user input. We'll be uh, setting that attribute in our GraphQL uh, schema definition later in this video. Next, I'm adding add user params. And as you might have uh, guessed, this type will have all our uh, user attributes and all these attributes are required while adding a new user. Next, I'm adding update user. And update user parameters will be similar to add user parameters, except that only email is a required attribute. And finally, for delete user parameters, uh, we just uh, need the email address and it's a required uh, attribute. Now let's add some code to our Lambda functions to interact with our uh, DynamoDB data. I'll start with uh, add user. Let's first import our uh, types we just defined. We'll be using uh, user type and add user params uh, in this Lambda function. And by default, we're using a generic uh, handler type from AWS Lambda package. But AWS Lambda also provides AppSync uh, specific handler. It's called AppSync Resolver Handler. And let's use that instead of uh, the generic handler. And this handler takes uh, two arguments. First one is the add user params. And the second one is the return type, which in our case is uh, user. So let's add these uh, arguments to our uh, handler. And the return type uh, of our promise uh, would be user. As we'll be using DynamoDB functions in multiple Lambda functions, uh, I would like to add some utility functions in my uh, Lambda layer. So within the util files in shared folder, 
I'll first add a function called get DDB uh, doc client, which basically returns us uh, a DynamoDB uh, document client. Let me add uh, required imports as well and install these uh, packages. Now let me paste the code in our add user lambda function to build our user object and add it to our DynamoDB table. First, we are printing the event. It can be useful for uh, debugging purposes. Next, we are building our user object and assigning the values from event.arguments.addUserInput. And then we are fetching our DynamoDB doc line from our utils file. And finally, we are using a put command to write the user item into DynamoDB table. And we are fetching the table name from the Lambda environment variable. So that's our add user function. Coming to delete user, let me paste in the code. Here we are using uh, delete user params uh, type definition and passing it in as an uh, argument uh, to our app sync resolver handler. The return type of this uh, handler will be a uh, string as I'm just returning a success or error message. First, I'm trying to query the user based on uh, email and if the user is present, I'm deleting it uh, using delete command. And if not, I'm uh, just returning a message saying uh, user with email not found. So that's our uh, delete user handler. Now let me paste in the code for uh, get users. Here we are using get users params uh, type definition and I created a new type called result as our result should have a list of users and a next token if the data is uh, returned in uh, batches. We shall be using these two types as arguments to our uh, handler. And within the handler, I'm first defining the query input and adding exclusive uh, start key based on uh, next token. Then if an email is uh, passed in the arguments, I'm querying uh, on our hash key, which is email. And if not, I'm querying on item type index with item type is equal to uh, user. Then I'm executing the query and building my result object with data and next token and returning the result. Now let me paste the code for uh, update user. And here I'm using update user params type uh, definition. And the return type for this handler will be either the user object or a string. This is because we'll be returning a string message if the user is not found in our uh, table. So first we are trying to fetch the user based on our email address. And if the user is found, we are creating uh, an updated user object and updating the values from event.arguments.updateUserInput and writing the updated uh, user to the DynamoDB table. If the user is not found, uh, we are just returning user not found message. So those are our four Lambda functions. I have kept it simple for the sake of this uh, demo, but you can have uh, your business logic to connect to any of your uh, data sources in these Lambda functions. Now let's quickly add these Lambda functions to our uh, Lambda config. So within my uh, lib config lambda hyphen config dot ts, I'll add my uh, lambda functions here. You need to make sure that the names here matches our uh, lambda handler file names. As you can see, our current environment is uh, empty. So we need to add a ddb underscore table environment variable as we are using that uh, environment variable in our uh, lambda functions. Here I'm adding my uh, ddb underscore table value as app name hyphen environment and I'm getting those values from my uh, context. So that's our Lambda config. At this stage, we can deploy our stack to deploy all our uh, Lambda functions. Let's do that using uh, CDK deploy command and make sure uh, you set your AWS uh, profile. Our deployment is now uh, finished. Let's quickly have a look at the console and we can see our uh, four Lambda functions created here. Now let's define and deploy our uh, DynamoDB uh, table and import some sample user data. So within my uh, stack file, I'll first add code for our DynamoDB table. Let me also add required imports from uh, CDK lib. As you can see, we are setting our uh, table name as app name hyphen environment and getting the values from uh, CDK context. And I'm setting the billing mode to uh, paper request and I'm using email as the partition key or hash key. Now let me add an index on uh, item type. I'm setting the index name as item type hyphen index and the partition key uh, for this index will be item type. Next, we need to provide permissions for our uh, Lambda role to be able to read and write data to this uh, DynamoDB table. We can easily do that using uh, grant read write data method on the DynamoDB table, which is defined and uh, pass in the Lambda role. Let's now deploy uh, DynamoDB uh, resources using CDK deploy. Our deployment is now finished. And if we take a look at the console, uh, we can see our DynamoDB uh, table created with email as the partition key. The table is empty as of now. 
uh, let's import some mock user data into this table. I generated some sample user data and I have a sample uh, script to import this uh, data into a DynamoDB table. Let me execute the script. If we take a quick look at the table data now, we should be able to see our uh, sample user data imported. Now let's create a schema for our uh, GraphQL API. So let me first add a file in my uh, lib directory called uh, schema.graphql. Let's first add a type for our uh, user entity. And these GraphQL types will be similar to our uh, TypeScript type definitions with, with slight uh, changes. So this is our uh, GraphQL type for uh, user entity. And the exclamation mark indicates that the attribute is a required attribute. Next, we need to add inputs for our uh, create, update, read, and uh, delete operations. So let me paste in the code here. So for add user input, we are adding all the required uh, attributes. And update user input will be similar to add user input, uh, except only email is a required attribute. And delete user input will have uh, email attribute, which is required. And finally, get user will have uh, two optional attributes, uh, email and uh, next token. So now let's define our uh, queries. In our case, we'll have only uh, one query, which is uh, get users. So we are defining a type called uh, query and the query name is uh, get users and it will take uh, get users input as an argument and returns an object with uh, data and uh, next token. So let me add a new type for our uh, get user response, which contains uh, data and next token and data will be uh, an array of uh, user objects. Next, we need to define our uh, mutations. Here we are defining three mutations for add, update, and delete users and passing in respective uh, input types as uh, arguments. So that's our uh, GraphQL schema definition. Now we are uh, ready to define our uh, AppSync API. At the time of this uh, recording, AppSync constructs are uh, still in alpha. So we need to install uh, and use uh, the alpha package from uh, CDK. So let me install the package first and import it in our um, stack file. Now let me paste the code for our uh, API definition. So here I'm setting my API name to uh, app name hyphen uh, environment and I'm pointing the schema attribute to the schema file we just uh, created within the lib directory. And for authorization, I'm using API key. And there are other uh, authorization options available like IAM, uh, Lambda, ODIC, and uh, Cognito user pools. And you can use uh, one of these uh, available authorization methods as per your uh, requirements. Also, there are many other uh, settings uh, that you can configure on the API. And I'm just using the basic settings here. Also, when you set the authorization to API key, a new key will be uh, created automatically. Now, before proceeding further and uh, attach our uh, Lambda functions to the API, let's do a CDK deploy and make sure the API is deployed successfully without any uh, errors. As we can see, our deployment is now uh, finished. Let's quickly take a look at the console and we can see our uh, API created and the auth mode is set to uh, API key. And if we go into the API and uh, check the schema, so we have our uh, schema created here. Now we can attach our uh, Lambda functions uh, to uh, our new uh, GraphQL API by defining uh, resolvers. So in our stack file where we are uh, creating our Lambda functions uh, within the loop, let's add a Lambda data source and uh, resolver for get users. So here we are adding a Lambda data source uh, using the method uh, called uh, add Lambda data source, which is present on our uh, GraphQL uh, API construct. And we are adding this uh, data source uh, based on the function name, which means if the function name is uh, get users, it adds a data source pointing to our uh, get users lambda function. And once the data source is defined, we're using uh, the create resolver method to create a resolver. And the create resolver method takes two arguments, type name, which is query in this case, and field name is uh, get users. And this is the same name we defined in our uh, schema definition file. Similarly, let me add uh, data sources and resolvers for our add user, update user, and delete user functions. Again, we are defining the data sources based on the function name and attaching uh, respective uh, Lambda functions. The type name will be mutation for these uh, resolvers and the field names uh, will be as we uh, defined in our uh, schema definition file. 
So this will add all our raw data sources and resolvers. So let's deploy this now using CDK deploy. The deployment is now finished. Let's take a look at the console. Under data sources, we should be able to see all our raw data sources and each data source is uh, pointing to respective Lambda function. If you go to schema and under resolvers, we should see our uh, mutations and uh, queries attached uh, to respective uh, data sources. We have now defined and uh, deployed all our resources required for our uh, GraphQL API. It's now time to test our uh, queries and uh, mutations. And let's uh, test these uh, queries and mutations from AWS console. Under queries page, uh, you can see that uh, we have the get users query here, and we should leave the authorization type as uh, API key. And if we expand get users here, we should uh, see the input and output attributes. Let's first try without providing any uh, input. And under data, you can choose uh, which attributes you are interested in. I'll just select all attributes and next token and hit the play button here. So this query should return all the users. And if the response is uh, batched, we should see our uh, next token as well. In this case, all users are returned in a single request. That's the reason our uh, next token is uh, empty. We can also provide uh, email as input if you want to uh, get specific user based on uh, email. So let's try that with this uh, email address. And we should see the response uh, specific to that uh, user. Now let's test our uh, mutations as well. I'm just pasting a mutation to add a an user. I provided values for all the required attributes here and selected all the return attributes. Now, if we execute this uh, query, a new user should be added to our DynamoDB table and it returns our uh, user object. We can verify that uh, by querying again based on the email address. And we should get the new user data as response. Let's try updating a user. I'm pasting uh, my update user uh, mutation. Here I'm passing the required uh, attribute, which is email in our case, and I'm updating the job title to uh, Cloud Architect. Now, if we execute this query, our job title should be uh, updated to uh, Cloud Architect. And again, we can verify it using uh, query, and we can see the updated uh, job title. Now let's quickly test our uh, delete mutation as well. Let me paste in my uh, delete mutation. Here we are just uh, passing in the email address, which is the required attribute. And if we execute this, we should see a message saying uh, user deleted successfully. And if we try the query again, we should see an empty array because the user is uh, deleted. So that's how we can uh, test our um, queries and uh, mutations. And one of the powerful components of uh, GraphQL API is uh, subscriptions, which uh, enables real time data flow between client applications and the API. And let's see how we can create uh, subscriptions. So in our uh, schema.graphql file, let me add a new type called uh, subscription. And here I'm adding three subscriptions, one for each uh, one of our uh, mutations. And I'm calling these on add user, on delete user, and on update user. And I'm mapping these subscriptions to their uh, respective mutations using AWS subscribe uh, annotation. Note that the mutations argument is an array, meaning uh, you can trigger the subscription based on multiple uh, mutations. So let's deploy this using CDK deploy. The deployment is now uh, finished. Let's jump onto AWS console and check the schema. And uh, under resolvers, we should see our uh, new subscriptions. Let's test a subscription from our uh, queries page. I'm pasting in my uh, subscription and I'm calling it add user subscription. And once I execute this uh, subscription, you can see a spinner here, which indicates that it is subscribed to add user mutation. Let's open another tab and execute uh, add user mutation. So we added a new user using add user uh, mutation. If we go back to our uh, subscription window, we should see the new user details within the subscription output. So this is just a simulation of how uh, subscriptions work within uh, AppSync GraphQL API. And we can use AppSync client or uh, Amplify packages and implement these uh, real-time features in your uh, mobile or uh, web applications. So that's the process of developing and deploying AppSync uh, GraphQL APIs using CDK. And that's a wrap for this uh, video. Hope you liked it. And if you did, uh, check out these uh, other related videos. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Keep learning. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.